It has seemed natural to ask, where do new genes come from? The textbook answer is that, in a strict sense, nothing in evolution is created de novo. Each new gene must have arisen from an existing gene. This perspective suggests that genes are primarily inherited through duplication, or occasionally acquired from other species. But I've wondered what happens when we encounter a gene that doesn't look like anything else. A 2020 article called Where Did New Genes Come From? explores the phenomena of orphan genes. Orphan genes are genes that have no known relatives. They simply do not look like other genes that we have seen before. They are non-homologous. We might consider a gene a collection of letters, like names, like the names Gary and Keith. Gary and Keith the genes. Gary is homologous. We've seen Gary before, in one form or another. But Keith seems new, out of the blue. Maybe Keith was once Gary and diverged beyond recognition. Or perhaps there was once a lot of Keith, but only one lineage of Keith now remains. Or perhaps Keith was the product of horizontal gene transfer. Or maybe Keith didn't arise from an existing gene at all. De novo gene creation is the evolution of genes from non-genic DNA sequences. Within non-genic sequences, spontaneous mutations may occur, which result in the generation of readable DNA that confers marginal advantages. This readable DNA sequence may undergo refinement through subsequent mutations and selective processes. From this, a new beneficial gene could arise. So how many orphan genes could have arisen this way compared to those that could have arisen by sequence divergence? To determine this, researchers considered each gene's position relative to its neighbors, the gene's syntony. This method relies on the observation that although the parts of a chromosome may get shuffled over time, the order in which genes occur is largely unchanged. To identify orphans created by divergence beyond recognition, the researchers assumed that if a gene's neighboring sequence was in the same order across different species, then whatever lay in between this sequence might be the same as whatever is in between those genes in the other species. Using this method, the researchers estimated that at most a third of the orphan genes they tested could be the result of divergence beyond recognition, leaving the majority to be explained by de novo gene creation. However, another team of researchers using a method that estimated the rates of mutation put the number of diverged orphan genes at 55-73%, to 73%, leaving between a half and a quarter of the orphans to be explained by de novo gene creation. Whatever the final ratio actually turns out to be, to me, this article highlighted that a significant proportion of orphan genes cannot be explained by divergence from existing genes. But the article also highlighted an intractable problem. If de novo genes accumulate mutations, they begin to appear less and less like the non-genic sequence that they may have emerged from. How might we identify de novo gene creation if it has already diverged beyond recognition is unknown. In reading about the efforts of different researchers, I learned that while different methods may lead to different specific results, that a biological phenomenon may still be broadly described through their convergence. Having read this article, I want to know more, not only about de novo gene creation, but also the regions of the genome long derided as junk. For me, it is interesting that these non-genic areas may be sources of genetic diversity, fueling the engine of evolutionary adaptation. 